In this video, we're going to be turning this drab little enclosure into an amazing little bioactive enclosure, and this is how we do it. So this is one of Manted Den's brand new enclosures. This is only a prototype, so I don't know if this one is going to go into production yet. So a top opening enclosure. It's good for sort of tarantulas and invertebrates and stuff like that. For me, I'm going to use it as a mantis setup eventually. I think it's quite good. It comes flat pack and you get to build it up, but we do have to start cleaning it. So you need a reptile disinfectant and a rag and basically just give it a really good scrub. You don't know what's left on there from the manufacturing purposes, so it's always better just to clean it. It only takes 10 minutes. But with this being made for invertebrates, it's not water resistant, so silicon sealant, 100% silicon, and give it a seal. Go across all the bottom joins where the plastic meets the plastic, all over all the nuts and bolts, everything. Make sure it's really watertight. You're going to need your silicon, like I say, 100% silicon, and your piece of machinery to get the silicon on there, really. Go over every little bit. You do not want any leaks if you are going to convert one of these to bioactivity. Little teaser for you here, you see this little thing I'm using to hold the door open? Well that's a small dog harness. We're going to start harness training Hugo, my Savannah monitor. If that is something you're interested in, please make sure you do hit that subscribe button. I'm quite proud with how this come out, but it's time to move on to the next stage of building the background. We have to measure the size, we're going to cut the styrofoam out into the correct sizes and show you a neat little trick on how to actually shape it to make it so you've got enough space but make it so it looks three dimensional and is three dimensional. You need to cut it out, be careful with a sharp knife. We needed to take into consideration the little brackets that are on the side. They're just there to help secure it, to make it rock solid. So we needed to cut those little edges out, cut it, make sure it all fits in perfectly fine. This one does, but now it's time. We've got all these little leftover pieces available and a lighter. Oh no, what are we going to do? Well, this is it. We use the heat to melt the styrofoam only ever so slightly you have to run the heat over it we're going to use all these little added extra pieces just to add a little bit more three-dimensional dimensions to the actual background itself now it isn't going to be this thick if it was this thick originally it would take up too much room stab a screwdriver into the bottom of the styrofoam just so you're not holding the styrofoam while the flame's there and quickly run the flame over once you've done this you start getting these little effects like i say you do have to be very quick figure out whereabouts you actually want these additional extras to be you do the same trick on the background with the lighter just heat it up give it that three-dimensional natural look figure out the exact placement of where you want it make sure it's nice and secure you can go over it again with the lighter just to make sure it all fits in really well it doesn't just look like something's been added there add some silicone or some no nail some sticky glue absolutely anything to adhere them both together and leave them to dry for a good 24 hours make sure they're rock solid before you start tampering with them once again a good top tip is you can use a box or a book or something turn it over and lay that on top and that will help keep them together while they're drying but when they're drying you can put them together just like this and mark out the locations that way the additional extras can go between one background piece onto another background piece and it will really make it look like it's flowing nicely and it's all one piece instead of just bodged together and just continue the same process on the back panel and both the side panels add your silicon to the additional extras stick it down onto the background piece desired and lay them all down nice and flat so that they can all cure overnight now this is where it can get quite messy we're going to cover the nasty white styrofoam background with silicon put an awful lot on i really do enjoy using an awful lot rub it all in with your finger and get every little nook and cranny absolutely covered you really do want to cover this with silicon it can get extremely messy then you go on to the substrate you need a dry substrate this is my substrate mix i'll run through that 
further on in the video but put the styrofoam background in pull it out shake it off hopefully the substrate has stuck to the silicon that you did put on if you need more on put some more on you will find you're going to have some white showing through if that does happen just get more silicon put a little blob there put some more substrate over the top of it and you'll end up with something like this now you want to do it to all three sections of the background that's the back panel and the two sides this is an important part make sure you do get every little white aspect covered in substrate then it's time to test the background pieces inside the enclosures make sure they still fit with the additional width that's been added by the substrate once you've measured it all up it does fit in nicely once you're satisfied that they all do fit in really nicely it doesn't matter if there is a little bit of a gap like you do see at the back corners here that can be filled in later Take your pieces back out and add some more silicon onto the back of the styrofoam. I like to use quite a lot to make sure it is extremely secured to the background so that it won't fall off in time to come. Press it nice and firm, make sure it's nice and solid and you'll be perfectly fine. Do this to all three of your back panel sections and then continue on with the little gaps that we did see in the back corner. The way we come across those is to fill the gaps up with silicon and then add more substrate into those joins. The best and easiest way to do this is to lay the enclosure down on its back and add in quite a lot. Just go across both sides and pack in the substrate, making sure it is nice and secure. Once again, make sure your substrate is extremely dry, otherwise this will not work. Once you've done all of the little areas that you can possibly see, make sure you leave it to air out with the lid off for a good 24 hours. Make sure all those fumes are gone before we move on to the next step, which is the drainage layer. First things first, you have to empty out all the residue substrate that is left, then admire your work. Find out what drainage material you're going to use. For me, I'm going to use this BioLife drainage medium. Give it a good wash, it is very, very dirty and dusty. Once it's washed, pour it into the bottom of the enclosure. This just adds for a water table like we'd naturally have in our wild. You need a separation between the drainage layer and your substrate. For me, I use this window screen tent mesh, cut it to size. I like to cut it a little bit bigger and push it down into all of the corners, making sure it overlaps a little bit. Now this is the substrate we're going to use. It's my version of a substrate. If you'd like to see how to make it, I have made a video and I'll link it above just for you. Now I do like to use an awful lot of substrate just to allow for deep root growth. The roots can really grow from the plants down into the substrate, making them extremely secure within the enclosure. So add a deep layer of substrate. Then compact it down with your fingertips, making sure it is all nice and secure, and then decide what plants you're gonna use. We're quite lucky here at Northern Exotics, we do have a wide variety of plants that we grow in house for us to be able to use whenever we want. However, this is a small enclosure, so we've got a small little weeping dew here. We just dig a little tiny hole, allow it to go as deep as we can possibly get it just to help make it nice and secure. We've got a lovely little pothos. We pull the bottom leaves off just to, again, allow for deep root growth. We can get that plant really deep. Now, these plants are gonna grow quite big, quite wild and quite viney, which is exactly what I want in this enclosure. Then we've got this little one. This is just gonna cause a little bit of coverage along the bottom layers of the substrate. After doing this, we like to add in our cleanup crew, which is springtails and tropical gray isopods, some leaf litter, and then we're pretty much done with the insides apart from the vines. After all, this is a praying mantis enclosure. It it'll need something to climb on these are vines that we've made ourselves if you want to see how we've made them i'll link a video in the top cards right now we're going to put it underneath the plant so the plants can grow around it as well as over it and on it but we always like to go above and beyond so we're not just going to add one we're going to add another one at the top praying mantis like to hang upside down so they can molt out of their original skin so we give them that option in here give everything a good water Making sure to saturate the substrate to allow for the plants to start thriving at a good plant grow light we're using the reptile systems pro 10 led light here we like this one because we've used it on various other enclosures and the plant species that we've chosen in here are gonna thrive under that light then basically we leave it for around about a month to allow for a bacterial plume and then on to adding the animal thank you ever so much for watching if you have enjoyed the video please consider liking and subscribing